Today we're going to be making our Robert and Nierma sculpture. We are going to start with some clay. We keep our clay wrapped in our plastic bag so that it doesn't dry out. We want our clay nice and moist while we work with it. We're going to use our wire cutters to take off a chunk of the clay and we're going to begin rolling it into a slab. For our slab we need to make sure that we have our canvas laid out on our table. We have our thickness strips and we've made sure that they are both of even thickness. And now we're going to use our rolling pin to start spreading out the clay. So we want to keep our rolling pin perpendicular to our thickness strips. We don't want to be rolling this way with the thickness strips. We want to be rolling out. And we want to make sure that we are getting this pretty wide because the first template that we're making is 6 by 6 inches and that will form the face of our uh, 3D box here. So we're continuing to roll out. This is not a mo motion for the lazy. We should stand up, put some muscle into it, and get that clay spread out. Okay, we've just got, about got it. All right, so this is rolling smoothly across the clay right now. I know that it is now even thickness with the thickness strips. So I'm going to take my template, find where it fits here on the slab. I'm going to use my thickness strip as a straight edge so I get a nice clean cut on the edge. And I'm going to be using my needle tool to cut out the square. We check it out. This is now all even thickness and we want to handle this carefully so it doesn't stretch out. We want to maintain that square shape. So I've got a board. I'm going to just set this to the side. If I don't want it to stick to the board, I could lay a paper towel down below it. Uh, next I'm going to see if the, with the remainder of the clay I can get the second square out. It doesn't appear that this will fit, but I can maximize the slab that I have rolled and go ahead and try to get the sides of my sculpture using this rectangle. To get our second square, we're going to wedge this clay together. We might need a little bit more to make sure that we have this big enough. And now as we're joining pieces of clay together, we do want to make sure that we wedge it. So either kneading it like it's bread dough or forming it into a cube. Everybody's favorite process, get out those exceptions. Okay, air bubbles are definitely out of there now. We don't want air bubbles exploding and heating up in the kiln. So we want to start rolling this out into a slab again. Alright, I don't want to wedge up the extra clay just yet. Um, because my next step is to print out the letters for my sculpture. I should have sat down with a plan sheet beforehand to determine what my word would be. I've already printed it out. I'm going to have the message of read because I'm sure as your English teachers and other teachers would tell you, it is so very important. So now I'm going to place this on top of my clay slab. So on top of this slab, you're going to place the printout of your word. Uh, you can print it out using Microsoft Word. I use Rockwell 225 point and I like it because it has a nice thickness to it. It has good heavy slabs which is, are these lines here on the end and they're great for cutting out in clay form. Um, so right now I'm just pressing into the clay with my pencil. I do need to keep this together because I will use this for the second set of letters. My sculpture is two-sided and so I'll need two sets of these letters unless I've chosen a second word that is also four letters for the back side. So if I peel this off, um, it is a little faint but you can see the impression of the R into the clay. If you're having a difficult time seeing it, you could also take a second swoop around making a deeper impression with your pencil line before cutting it. Now at this time, you have the option of cutting with a wooden tool or a needle tool. I would really encourage you to use the needle tools because we want accuracy and precision. So we want to hold this upright as we cut around and really take our time. We don't want to butcher the Rockwell typeface. 
So paying attention to all the details. And don't forget those inside spaces on A's, B's, P's, etc. Now, you might want to try to grab this out of here, but what will be more useful to you is if you just subtract the area around the letter to help maintain the shape. I'm going to peel this away, and now I'll continue on. This has plenty of space. I don't need to re-wedge or set it all up again. I can go ahead and try to fit an E on there, an A, and possibly a D. If not, I still have my slab from the other end to use. slabs are rolled. We've got two squares, two rectangles, and two sets of letters. You can finally take a seat and we're going to start the score slip smooth process. Those are your three really big important S's of clay and you might remember them from elementary school as scratch to attach. So if we look at the design of Robert Indiana he has things laid out in like four quadrants and so we're just going to set up our letters here. We can use our thickness strip as a straight edge to kind of plan out our space, get things lined up. Okay, we want some good spacing. And then if we look back to his Love and Hope sculptures, one of the letters is always rotated on an angle to show that unpredictable nature. I'm sure you've read a good book and found an unpredictable twist or turn in the story. So on this one, we're going to turn our E on a bit of an angle just to show that unpredictable plot twist that could happen. So now that we've got everything laid out where we want it, all you need to do right now then is stand up the letter. On the back you're going to score and you could use a needle tool or a wooden tool for this. You just want to create a texture for your clay to grip onto and then we want to have a water cup and slip so we're placing water on the back and now the last S is to smooth. So you want to choose a wooden tool that's appropriate for the size. This is a little big, so it's not going to get into our fine details, but this one is just right. And we want to go around and smooth this into the back wall of the clay. You're initially going to get little ridges, but then you can just come back through with your finger and some water, or in the final process, we can use a paintbrush to completely smooth out the letter. We still want to keep the shape of that Rockwell font or typeface that we used making sure everything is secured down so that as it dries the letter doesn't start to separate or pull off of the square.